I recall only one other birthday party in my life. It was at the height of the Cold War anti-communist witch hunt, which demonized dissent and difference. And I was a masculine girl child of about five, living with my family in the Bell Aircraft factory housing projects in nearby Buffalo, New York. My parents had set up a cookout grill and invited neighbor co-workers. And I remember surveying the crowd of people in the neighborhood, the children and the adults, and I had this cold, icy chill of a realization that I didn't have any words for at that time, which was that nobody looked different like I did. And so I assumed I wouldn't grow to adult. And now here at age 60, I've outlived the life expectancy that seemed to loom before me as a gender variant child during the Cold War anti-communist witch hunt. I made a decision a long time ago that it was more important to me how I live than how long. I've lived by this truth that an injury to one is an injury to all for a long time now. In fact, how it got, when you look at this picture, Blue Varick, this is where the yellow ink came from, for this t-shirt that was made almost 30 years ago that says the truth that the union movements build on, which is that an injury to one is an injury to all. So I feel some personal pride in being a survivor at age 60, but I also know that it's not merely a personal accomplishment. That literally being part of the forward social movement in history has brought me from isolation into mass social interaction with people struggling for economic and social justice in the US and in countries around the world. For me, the pinnacle of my lifetime trajectory from marginalization to social activist connection was on October 21st, 2007. I was in San Francisco to speak about finding common ground where communists and religious activists could find, to be in solidarity in the struggle for social transformation and liberation. The San Francisco mayor's office had named that day Leslie Feinberg Day. The California, the California State Legislature and the city and county of San Francisco sent official congratulations. I'm not tagging that day in San Francisco to boast or to claim personal prestige but that's the day in my adult life that I was finally pulled down like kudzu after three decades of undiagnosed illness. I had to cancel my first visit below the Earth's equator. I returned from the airport in a wheelchair and was hospitalized for five days in New York. How that marginalized five-year-old girl at here birthday party in Buffalo would have been heartened and strengthened to know and less afraid how much change Z would live to be a part of, and that Z would someday be welcomed by others struggling against social and economic injustice and equality, and that it could be done as a revolutionary without bending principle. In the almost two years since, illness and resulting disabilities have kept me at home, mostly alone in dim daylight or in the comfort of darkness before dawn, virtually incommunicado, and this is the first time I've seen my photographs in this light. When it, come, when it came time to build the communications hub as a lifeline, I could not have broken that isolation alone. And I need to therefore acknowledge the patient and extraordinary efforts of those whose work helped me to build an apparatus of communication that brought us together for me to be able to share with you some of the work I've done during this year of dislocation and relocation. My gratitude to Art Rage and its director, Rose Viviano, for creating and defending this space. Art Rage, which is just down the hill from us in our own neighborhood, describes itself as no ordinary gallery. They say, quote, its mission statement is to exhibit progressive art that inspires resistance and promotes social awareness, supports social justice, challenges preconceptions, and encourages cultural change. I want to thank Susan and Andy for volunteering their experience and hours of labor to install these photos. 
and captions, our ASL interpreter for making this event bilingual, Reen for artistically designing the articulation of signage under the pressure of time, Joe Carpenter for constructing an accessible workspace for me in our new home and our apartment, Carrie Mondor, my Photoshop guide, teacher, and mentor for working on each of these photos with me at the community darkrooms, sometimes literally a pixel at a time, helping me to develop my own independent aesthetic and to love digital printing. Rob Push for teaching me how to aggregate digital web media communications. Sue Harris, People's Video Network, who built a YouTube channel for me at the height of my disability so that I could continue to speak out when I was so ill. And Tori Mendoza, videographer and graphic artist for putting all the pieces together, connecting my photographic communication to my videos, podcasts, written words, and social networking tools. Your work, together with Minnie Bruce's, has created a framework that helps me to express that I have not disappeared, I'm not demoralized, I'm not afraid. I certainly don't have the luxury of retirement from struggle. <laughs> I'm just really, really sick. This work has allowed me to convey to you that my lack of contact has been an indication of just how ill I am, not a sign of uncared. In the weft and warp of love and struggle, you are my quality of life. I have begun to understand that I have to give up on old ways of trying to reach each person one at a time, and I need new forms of connection and communication. I ask my loved ones who are here today, or watching, to forgive me for not naming you. Hey, that's a lot to ask. You planned and bore the cost and effort of travel in order to be with me together at a moment in my life when support becomes a material force. You made this milestone in our relationship possible. But it's not just a consideration of how much time it would take to acknowledge. It's that state discrimination against same-sex love, denying us more than 1,000 life and death benefits, also robs us of language for relationships outside of blood ties and heterosexual marriage. My love draws no boundary between blood family and chosen family. There's also a beautiful word for another powerful relationship in this room, and that's comradeship. It's a bond forged in struggle between freedom fathers. Those who strive to struggle against each other's oppression as hard as they do against their own those for whom there are no borders and the workers struggle, who understand that no human being is illegal, who won't stop struggling until every battle is won. I have comrades in this room who I have been together shoulder to shoulder at the barricades for more than 35 years. Also in this room are new friends who I welcome as warmly as my lifelong friends here today. Che Guevara wrote, at the risk of seeming ridiculous, a revolutionary is guided by great feelings of love. 